Hi, welcome to the Noise Path, the sister channel of the Signal Path. And I have this instrument here that I got in clearance, and apparently it's been in some kind of a mechanical incident, and it's been put against another instrument or fallen off of an edge of a table, and you can see that all these pins in the front are bent. And apparently it also doesn't turn on, although I actually haven't tried, because I want to investigate and see if the pressure against these connectors has damaged the PCB in any way. I've always wondered about these power supplies that have extended connectors. They're all, of course useful because you can put a cable in them, but they're also sticking out, which means they can get caught. And this is fairly heavy because of the fact that this is a linear uh, power supply has a huge uh, transformer in it. So let's go ahead and take a look inside and see if there is anything wrong with it, and maybe we can fix it and put it back to use. And here's inside the instrument, and I have to say it's held up fairly well. We have to go further down to see the connector. And there was something loose inside, rattling around. I actually didn't notice that initially until I opened it, and it fell out of the box. And I'm going to let you think about what that is for just a moment. And uh, so there's a main board over here. This main board controls essentially everything. The GPIB serial port is here. All the digital is here. All the actual power supply stuff is down there, and the interfaces with these cables. Uh, this is a pretty complicated unit, really, I would say, in some ways, even over-engineered, because there's a whole other processor here in the front panel. And this is a technique that's actually been used more and more often, that the front panel becomes essentially a completely separate computer. And then you can attach that to pretty much anything. Kitty has taken that approach. I believe that uh, Roden Schwartz has that approach, and all the new power supplies from Keysight also do the same thing. This is a really classic power supply. This is a 60 volt model, uh, which is actually fairly rare because you know normally people don't buy the 60 volt model. But if you put two of them in series, which are of course all isolated, you can get 120 volts up to 60 watts at DC, which can be useful for some high voltage applications. So anyway, did you figure out what's missing? And of course, it's this guy that's popped out of this. That probably when it fell, I have to figure out which direction it goes in. I think it's like this. We can put that back in there. It's probably why it wasn't booting or something. But uh, anyway, I'm not, not going to turn it on uh, until we, you know, analyze exactly the connector and figure out if there is anything else wrong with it. Well, here are the connectors, and I have to say it's pretty impressive. I don't see any particular damage to the PCB. You can see there is a lot of flex on this, but once you put the front panel on, it's hugging all these connectors because there's a hole just big enough for the base of these connectors to go through, so it, it's not free to move as much as it is here. So it has two places where it is attached from, the, of course, the front panel and the solder. It's got really big connections. You can see the sense ports right at the edges, taking in lots of protection circuits and some capacitors at the output. You know, it looks pretty good. I don't see anything majorly wrong. I think I'm just going to straighten it out, maybe reflow the solders in these connections just to make sure there's no cold solder joint or anything that's cracked. But I have to say, it's really, you know, held up quite well considering how heavy this thing is. And here's the back and yeah, it looks okay. Again, I'm going to have to double check and make sure that the soldering is, is fine, but there's of course some bend to this. So I think the best way really to unbend this is to perhaps put a wrench against this base and, and try and tilt it forward without putting too much pressure on this because this PCB without the front panel installed is quite flexible and you don't want to you know burn it too, bend it too much. It's really only attached with a screw up here. Okay, I went ahead and I straightened these as much as I could. Again, nothing really unusual. I, I retouched the solder, just making sure I don't break the PCB. Let's turn it on. And what do we have? There you go, two beeps, that's good. The first beep is the internal processor. The second one, I believe, is the display. It looks good, it seems to be working so far. There it is, I can adjust the voltage. I can also go to the second channel. I can also adjust the voltage. We can also do a self-test on it. Turn it off, hold this button, turn it back on, wait for a moment. And let go. Let me see. There it is. Pretty good. Let's connect it to a DC load. I just want to make sure that it is working fine. But again, really simple repair here. I really didn't do much. So let's connect it to the BK Precision 8601, which is a DC electronic load. I want to see if it can do the 30 watts per channel on a 60 volt output. Some of the dangers of working in the lab. You never know what's waiting to come and get you. So let's slowly turn this up. And you go 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60. Yeah, looks good. So I'm reading 60.054 on the BK Precision and 60.09 uh, on the instrument. It needs to be calibrated. So I've already set it for half an amp. Let's enable that. There you go. No problem. It does that very well. And the cable I have uh, doesn't have much voltage drop across it, as you can see. But it is delivering 30 watts. Looks quite good. And here's the second channel. We're reading 59.95 on the BK Precision and 59.88 on the instrument. I'm going to enable the same thing. There you go. Almost 30 watts. 
I'm pretty happy with this. I mean, again, this is there's nothing wrong with this power supply. I just really just did a basic touch up, but you know, it's still pretty good. And you know, I have a lot of these I've collected over the years and repaired, and I didn't have a 60 volt one. So I'm sure we can think of some cool experiments to do with it. I hope you enjoyed this. I'll see you next time.